Good morning, everybody. I know that you are all muted, so you can't answer me back. We are working on getting our live streaming up and running. It worked yesterday, but of course now it wants to play games with us. So I'm going to ask Chris to play music for one more round, if he can.
Thank you, Chris. So uh, the good news is that we're all here together. The challenging news is that the Facebook live streaming isn't working. So I just posted a note onto Facebook saying that we will post the recorded video at the end of the service. Um, and that's the way it goes. We know that uh, technology is getting pressed pretty hard right here during Easter. So we're all doing our best. And what worked yesterday does not work today. Uh, David and Ginger Perkins have a, an Easter greeting for us. So we're going to make sure that we unmute them. Um, let me see if I can find them. Are you guys unmuted? Shout if you are. You are? Okay, I think it. Great. Okay, so we would love you to share your Russian Easter greeting with us, please. Okay, so Ginger's family was raised in the Russian Orthodox tradition. And a couple of things, everything is done in trees there in honor of the Trinity. And on Easter, when you would come upon a fellow uh, worshiper, you would say in English, uh, Christ is risen. And then the response would be, truly, he is risen. So in Russian, it is, it is to this false Christ. For yes, to this false Christ. It is to this false Christ. For yes, to this false Christ. Thank you. Uh, and now, why don't we... Um, go to our so that is our Christ is risen he is risen indeed greeting for this morning and we thank David and Ginger for sharing that tradition and now we're going to have some special music played by Lauren Reeder and Jeanette Heidman this is a flute duet so let us enjoy this
That was awesome. So welcome. It is Easter morning. Uh, it's Easter morning everywhere. In fact, some people wondered, would Easter be canceled because we are all isolating? But the truth is that Easter can never be canceled regardless of where we are. And so it is Easter morning in Jackson. It is Easter morning in Bartlett and Intervale and Conway and North Conway and Mount Washington Valley and many, many other places where people are joining us. So welcome everyone to Jackson Community Church's 1030 Easter service. This is a new one of a kind service for us, obviously. And we are glad to have you here. And uh, there may be a couple people that are unmuted. I'm gonna have you mute yourselves if you are unmuted. And what we just heard earlier in the, it, while we were waiting for the service to begin was music called Hector the Hero, which was performed by Davy Armstrong. And then we enjoyed again the flute duet by Jeanette Heidman and Lauren Weeder. And I also want to acknowledge that we will be having choir music today that was directed by Billy Carlton, who is our new choir director. The accompaniment for that was provided by Alan Labrie. And we have several members of our choir, and I'm going to try to name them off the top of my head. Meg, Bob, Jeanette, Judy Botsford. There's another, Eclair. And, and then Billy's singing too. I think that's everybody that's in the choir right now. Did I miss anyone? Probably not. And if I, if I did, you know you were in it. And our choir is continuing. They were rehearsing again this morning, and we grew by a few people already today. So we thank you for your participation in our virtual music. It's pretty exciting to make this all happen. We also want to thank Chris, who is helping to host today's service, and thank any of the other contributors that are offering us music. Gia and Chris Osborne's music will be featured today. And we have other families that are continuing to contribute music throughout the season. And so we have a lot of special gifts coming our way in the form of music. And speaking of music, we have another piece of music. This is our century music for today. So I'm going to ask you to put your feet firmly on the ground if you're able to and just breathe in and breathe out and arrive in this space and enjoy this song called Shebeg Shemor, written by the harper Turloch O'Carolan, who lived between 1670 and 1738, and this is performed by Dominique Dodge.
our gratitude to Dominique for her contribution to our service. We'll be hearing another one, another song by Dominique in a little bit later. At this time, I invite you to pray with me. We will be butterflying the cross later, and at that time, your personal prayers will be quietly added to the cross. And so at this time, please join me in a communal prayer. O Creator, Christ, and Comforter, Today is the day of all days. This is the day when you defy death itself and return back to us. Because your love is fierce and feisty and irresistible and nothing can separate us from you. We ask that you will be present to us in all of the ways that we need your presence. That you will hear the prayers that we have already lifted up today and every day of this long season for people who are dying because of the illness that is going around the world, by families that are affected in so many ways because of this pandemic. We ask for your protection for people that are on the front lines because they're essential workers or caregivers or healthcare workers or first responders who are working in places that others need, and so they are at risk. We ask that you be present to those that have been affected by the virus itself. We ask that you will be with those who are grieving because they have lost someone. And we think about all the other lives that are made more complicated because of this same pandemic. People that are living with existing conditions or new conditions, cancer, Alzheimer's, diabetes, so many different diagnoses that require extreme attention and yet to receive the care that people need even if you're recovering from something is challenging and so we ask for God's healing presence among all of us. And we ask for the reminder to focus on what this day means, that death cannot triumph, that love will triumph always, and be with us through everything, through death itself, and bring us back into a place of connection with what is holy. Oh, holy God, we ask that you will hear our prayers and hear our gratitude for all that helps us to get through this time, for the returning birds, for the rising sap, for the greening of the world, and for the connection to each other in new and creative ways. We belong together, we belong to each other, and we belong to you. We'll now hold a moment of silence. And then Gia and Chris Osborne will offer us their meditation on the Lord's Prayer. Bye. 
Father, we pray. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song. I will sing, sing a new song to the Lord. Let your kingdom come. Thanks to Chris and Gia for that. That's a different way to meditate on the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? And now, if you will join me in listening to scripture, we will read briefly from Acts 10, followed by Matthew 28, and narrate the story of the resurrection. We'll begin with Acts 10. Acts 10, 38 through 41. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. After the Sabbath, we'll begin now the Matthew 28 reading. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb and suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. For he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took a hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. So ends the reading. So friends, before we enter into a reflection on today's events, I actually want to invite one more song called By the Mark, which was written by Gillian, Gillian Welch and is performed by Dominique Dodge. This one is sung by Dominique as well, and you'll find that the words of this song are relevant to our reflection on the scripture today.
So friends, I ask that you'll pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. So Dominique's song lines up beautifully with the scripture and the story of women who go to the tomb grieving the one that they have followed, the person that they have loved more than anyone else in the whole world for so long. They believe he's dead, and though he has promised to come back, they don't have any confidence in that promise. And so they go, in this case, the gospel tells us that Mary Magdalene goes and she brings with her the supplies to take care of Christ's body. And she's surprised along the way. Now, there are some special stories about this that you won't find in the gospel. And they have to do, does anybody know what this is? It's an egg. For the people that are on the phone, I'm holding up a white egg. Probably some of you have already been coloring eggs today. Maybe you've broken them open and eaten them, or maybe you're still letting them be beautiful in your household. But there are special stories about the events around Christ's death and resurrection that have to do with eggs, and they have to do with a special kind of eggs. I'm now going to hold up part of my birthday present. This little black half disc is wax. And these little pens that I'm holding up have little tiny metal cups at the end of them. And you melt the wax and you actually use it to draw pictures on the eggs that are called Pasanki eggs. They come from the Ukrainian tradition. Now the egg that I'm holding up, and Chris is going to start showing us some pictures of these pretty shortly is not hard boiled like the eggs that you might usually color for Easter. It is, um, it, it's still, when you're painting it, it's still raw. And you'll see on the screen, if you're looking at it, um, the dye, the wax, the little tool that you use in order to draw, and an egg that's had a pattern drawn on it, and an egg that's been fully colored in. Now we think about Dominique's song, and she's, uh, the woman in that song says that she would know Christ by the marks on his precious skin. And those marks were incised through great suffering. And it is said that during this time, his mother Mary had eggs with her, and she brought those eggs to the guards that were at the foot of the, the soldiers at the foot of the cross and she begged them to be kinder to her son and when she wept and begged for this she wept on the eggs and created color on the eggs little spots of color and then simon who had helped christ carry his cross left behind all of his market supplies on the side of the road and when he went back to those supplies he discovered that the eggs were completely covered in colorful patterns. And the final story about these Pisanki eggs is that when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and she discovered there that the body was gone, she went and she looked at the eggs that she'd brought with her as a repast and she found that they were suddenly all the colors of the rainbow. And so these eggs which are an ancient tradition, have become part of an Easter tradition as well. And the way that you make these eggs is that you melt the wax and you apply it. You'll see that there are black lines going around the egg and everywhere that you color in black, when you then submerge the egg in dye, it, does, it leaves the, that pattern protected and so layer by layer, you go from light colors to dark colors, and you build a pattern and you add more and more black wax. And as you'll see in the next few images, eventually you begin to 
um, melt the wax away. And so these are two eggs, one, the one on the left made by Linda Gray, the one on the right that I made. These were in the Pisanki egg workshop last year. And each egg is unique and different. They're not perfect, but they have these patterns inside them. And the whole time that you're working on the egg, the egg has the yolk still inside of it. It hasn't been hard boiled. It could be cracked and broken at any point. And so you go through all the work of creating this beautiful pattern, but it's hidden away. It's hidden by that black wax. And how much like our whole, our, our season right now, all of us being covered by our masks, being separated from each other, going through these changes and waiting to discover what will come next for us. Then you melt away the wax and eventually you create a small hole in the egg and you let flow all of the interior of the egg. The yolk comes out, the white comes out, and the egg is hollowed out. It's hollowed out in the way that that tomb was hollowed out. And it's hollowed out the way that we are being hollowed out and changed to create space for all that we might yet become. This transformation promise is the great promise of Easter. And it feels like we are waiting for what comes next. But we live in the promise of Easter hope. We are Easter people and we have been taught to live through the dark night of the soul, to bear up and be present with death itself, knowing that death does not have the final answer for us, but that love will return beyond death itself and welcome us into a home that is greater than anything, but that love will transform us here on earth as well. And that like these eggs that have become these beautiful patterns, each its own special egg, we are being transformed by this time. And we are being emptied out just like that tomb is emptied out. Not because we are absent from each other or absent in love, but because love is flowing out, flowing out of the tomb, flowing out of Christ, and flowing into our lives, which have been broken open. It's hard to sit in this time of the pandemic and necessarily trust in the promise of Easter, but the promise is there and we are people of hope. And so when we think about the patterns that are being incised on us, the marks that are being made on our life, we can ask ourselves, what will remain at the end of this experience? What will we keep and what will be burned away and melted away and what will be revealed in us as individuals and as a community? What will we hold on to? Because you can't go back from this reality that we're in now and try to go back to the way it was. We are in a new normal. We are in a new reality. And we are changed forever by what has been happening. The invitation from Christ is to be open to that transformation and to let it be one that creates rainbow eggs and bright patterns and an enduring tradition and an enduring connection that will help us heal and become whole again and new in ways that will surprise us. This is the promise of the Easter tradition. So today, I'll be painting some Pisanki eggs and I'll be thinking of all of you. Pray that I don't break the egg. And let us all be willing to be patterned in the way that love is working on us right now. Calling our name and recognizing us and bringing into relationship. Thanks be to God. So we have a carol that was performed by our Easter choir. It's called the Easter Carol, appropriately enough. And I invite you now to enjoy this carol. Yeah. 
And now we're going to do a new version of the tradition that we've had for the last four years. Usually we flower the cross, we wrap the cross in chicken wire, and then we have people place individual flowers in it. And while they're doing that, we embody our prayers and we place them on the cross, both our worries and our hopes. That is where they live. We relinquish them to the one whose love can hold everything. And we leave lightened and liberated and know that we, knowing that we are held in that holy love that has come back from death itself to be with us. Today, your prayers are being held by butterflies. And so enter this next brief interlude in a prayerful way as we butterfly the cross together and offer your prayers up and offer to hold the prayers of others that are also being placed on the cross. So friends, this is the time in the service when we ask you to think about your commitment to the church. And we know that people have been giving in many different ways. People have been giving of their time and their talent in their treasure. 
where it is most needed during this pandemic. If you're able to continue your regular giving to the church, we deeply appreciate it. And we've been having people place their offering in a small vase. The alternative is to go to the church's website, jxncc.org, and there's a donate button there so you can make it easy and safe for yourself to do so. But we also ask that you be careful and sustainable in the way that you choose to contribute. Do what you are able. Help us be available to others in your generosity, but make sure that you are taking care of yourself as well. We thank you for the ways that you have been giving to this church, um, the music here today, the time that has been given to creating these creative gatherings is a testimony to so many of you being in community in new ways. And so we thank you. We are going to close out today's service by singing Christ the Lord is Risen Today. We'll put the lyrics up on the screen and then we'll uh, play the music underneath and you'll be able to sing along. Everybody should be muted uh, because we don't actually keep time to the, to the music as you hear it. And then if anybody wants to stay for a virtual coffee hour afterwards, you're more than welcome to hang out. This is the time when I say Happy Easter, and maybe we will, let's see, we're going to listen to Off to California by Molly and Joe Delavalla, and then we'll unmute you shortly after that, so you can either say goodbye or hang out and have a coffee hour with us. But why don't you at least wave at each other right now? Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. And this is the uh, sign language sign for I love you. Feel free to practice that. All right. <laughs> Thank you.
should be mostly unmuted now. Now we can either do this in chaos. Because my brother, I like my family's in here too, and I never get to talk to them either. So here, you know, like we all want to talk to each other. Happy birthday, Gail. Thank you. Peace to everybody.